Well, hello. Welcome back, guys. So glad you're here this week. Um, hey, go ahead and mark your calendars. I want to uh, just make you aware that June 1st, Tuesday, June 1st, um, is our next women's gathering. Uh, that always sneaks up on me. Every time the first um, of the month falls on a Tuesday, you know, I'm moving along and I'm like, oh, shoot, that's like right here. So mark your calendars. That is, I believe, three weeks, two weeks, two weeks from this Tuesday. So um, mark your calendars June 1st and we'll meet at the church. Uh, we'll do some praise and worship and have a teaching. It's going to be a fun time. So mark your calendars for that. You don't want to miss it. Um, okay, we are going to jump into the word. Uh, we have, again, been on a journey of redirecting, refocusing on the importance of hearing the voice of God and uh, and how he speaks to us constantly. And he speaks to us through his spirit. He speaks to us through the world around us. He speaks to us through the natural and the supernatural. And so we're looking at all these different ways, exploring it, talking about it, um, looking at scripture to have it reinforced. It's always good. If you can't reinforce what you're saying from scripture, you're probably wrong. That's that's free. That's not in my notes or anything, but it's kind of true. If, if it doesn't make sense in scripture, it's not in scripture. Uh, ask yourself why you're believing it. Eh, there we go. Okay. Uh, but back to uh, the voice of God, hearing his voice. Um, you know, what what we, how we've heard him in one season might look different in the next season. Um, as again, as long as it is all um, surrounded by the word of God, um, it, it's him. It, it's his voice. If it goes against his word, um, he never contradicts himself. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't live in a house divided. He and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not confused. They're all in agreement. They are all part of the Godhead. So, all right. Um, some simple stuff there, but we need to be reminded of that. Sometimes we hear something and we're like, wow, that made, that sounded so smart. And then we believe it and take it as truth. And then as you walk through life, you're like, why, why do I believe that? I don't think that's even accurate. So good reason to be in the word. Good reason to read the Bible. Um, hey, and every week that we do this, I give you guys scripture, but you should take that scripture and, um, and dive into it. Like see what the Lord wants to reveal to you. Um, don't just take my word for stuff. I'm kind of just dangling the carrot or just giving you like a little appetizer. You guys should dive in and get the whole meal because he has things he wants to tell you. All right. Um, so last week we started talking about how God speaks to us through the angelic realm. And we looked at places in scripture where God used an angel to bring forth his word. Um, again, we are not angels. We're not. Don't confuse them with people, but they are mighty in power. They do his work. They minister to us. They um, they uh, they patrol the earth. There's many different things that angels do. Um, they're not to be praised by any means. There's only one that we praise, one who deserves all of our worship and is worthy of it, and that is Jesus Christ, right? That is Lord. Don't don't glorify angels. They are really cool. They are um, used for um, for us to help us. But again, we don't worship them. We don't glorify them. But they're worth talking about because they're all over scripture and they're still around today. I know that for sure. So last week we looked, we talked a lot about that 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament and that God broke his silence. The voice of God came to the earth, came to mankind through the voice of an angel. And he did that in the story of John the Baptist to his father, Zechariah. Uh, so today we're kind of going to talk a little bit more, um, look at a couple more examples of that, and then um, look at some examples of of um, how, how we need to deal with angels. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but you'll understand as we get going. So um, this, the first thing I want to do is I want to read, you know, we looked at Zachariah's encounter with an angel. Now I want to look at Luke 1. Go ahead and, and open your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. And uh, let's see where the next encounter of an angel 
giving the voice of God to a human is. Luke chapter 1, we're going to read verses 26 through 38. I just love this story. That's why we're reading the whole thing. So it's powerful. All right. It says in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. So we talked about um, Zachariah and Elizabeth last week. So Elizabeth's pregnant with John the Baptist. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a, sa- to a town in Galilee. So we got Gabriel on the scene, the angel Gabriel. And he went to a virgin pleaded to be, I'm sorry, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Greetings, you who are highly favored. That is the word of the Lord for Mary. The angel just released that over Mary. Greetings, you who are highly favored. 29. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Verse 34, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Again, here's the voice of God to her through the ga- through Gabriel the angel. Verse 35, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. <laughs> Gives me chills. So the Holy One to be, por- to be born will be called the Son of God. Uh, verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month, uh, for no word from God will ever fail. That is so good. Let's end it with verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. All right, so we see this continuation of God breaking his silence to humanity. This 400 years of silence through um, his his angel, his angelic realm. He's putting them to work. The angel goes to Zechariah, then he goes to Mary, and he says, Hey, John the Baptist is coming to bring in repentance. And then the Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, will follow him and he will conquer sin and death. Praise the Lord. I love that so much. But again, an angel delivered that word to Mary. And I love the way God covers all of, covers the whole thing, the whole picture, right? This angel, there was an angel that also went to Joseph to keep him in the loop. Um, Joseph, who was pledged to be married to Mary, he's a devout follower of the law. And um, according to the law, if Mary was found pregnant, really she should be stoned to death. And so he just decided, I'm going to divorce her. Like, I've already pledged to be married to her, but because of this act of sin, because he just didn't know better, he said, I'm just going to divorce her quietly and we'll keep everything under, under wraps. And an angel even went to him and said, don't do that. Don't divorce her. This is the plan. This is the will of God. This is the plan. Follow it. So God is amazing and he covers He covers all of the steps. He covers the whole picture and everyone involved. Again, God speaks to humanity through the angelic realm, through angelic visitations. I want to read a couple verses here. This is a psalm. We're going to look at what David says about angels. Um, you know, angels, again, they're all throughout scripture. You can just do a word search, a Google search on angels and just see where the Lord wants you to land. But, um, but I, I want, I want to read just a couple of verses real quick. Uh, Psalm 91 verse 11 says, for he, speaking of God will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. All right. There, the, the purpose of angels is to guard you, is to protect you. Um, I know I pray for protection over my children, over my family, over my marriage, my husband, every single day, every morning. It's not a long, lengthy prayer. Um, But I really do visualize angels um, all around, around my household, around my family, and, and just speaking it out, just giving them something to do for the day. I visualize it. And I'm like... Their, their job is to guard us. Their job is to guard us in all of our ways. 
So it's important that we command them, tell them what to do. And they, you know what? They listen to the name of Jesus. When you're praying to the Lord and you're like, Jesus, I just ask for your angels, your mighty angels to protect my family, protect me, protect my children, protect my marriage, right? Like they listen to that name. They hear the name of Jesus. So, so, um, so do that. And then David, uh, speaking in Psalm 103, verse 20, it says, Praise the Lord, you his angels. He is talking to the angels. He is walking through this whole thing. I'm going to actually flip there in my Bible instead of using my notes because it is such a powerful chapter. You should uh, go through and read it. read it. But it is he's talking about stirring himself up, and then he moves on to creation. Um, I'm going to just begin in verse 17 but really psalm 103 if you want something to go to go to psalm 103 when we're done here read through it just highlight whatever mark down whatever ministers to you uh verse 17 it says but from everlasting to everlasting the lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Come on. He, David is instructing the angels, the ones who do his bidding, the one who obeys his word. I'm telling you. The Lord, when he speaks a word to you, um, like a word of protection or a word of, of whatever, and then you give that word, um, you speak it out and give the angels that assignment, they will obey. They will obey because the Lord loves you. He loves me because you fear him and the angels do his bidding. Does that kind of make sense? I'm trying to just communicate with you, like give the angels instruction. They have, sometimes they have messages from the Lord. Um, and sometimes they just direct us. They help like kind of lead us, right? We know we're led by the spirit, but they also listen to the spirit. I hope I'm making sense in this. It's really incredible. Spend time in Psalm 103. Um, angels speak to us. They protect us. Uh, they, they heed the word of the Lord. Um, I, I don't think I've shared this story with you, but if I have, you get to hear it again. So that's exciting. When I was, uh, 18, I, um, found out I was pregnant. And actually the way I realized I was pregnant is I had injured my lower back, um, earlier. It was my senior year of high school, injured my lower back. And I went through to chiropractors, um, having them, you know, see if they could figure out what was going on. And, and finally they decided we need to do an MRI on you. We can't tell what the heck is going on. So I'm, we're talking like nine months later Th during this nine months towards the end of it, actually, um, I had gone to Mexico with some friends with the boy I was dating at the time. And, and, um, I had gotten pregnant and had no idea. And so coming back from Mexico, I was to have this MRI. And so without my knowledge of being pregnant, I go in for this MRI to the hospital. My mom comes with me and they're making you fill out all the paperwork before they get you ready. And a couple of the questions, I think the nurse may have actually asked me, you know, is there any chance you're pregnant? And I'm like, well, no, you know, I'm not going to answer that in front of my mom. But in my mind, I was like, no, you, you don't get pregnant unless you actually want a baby. <laughs> Well, that's not true. If you have sex, you can get pregnant, believe it or not. That's also free, not in my notes today. Uh, but anyway, so answered all the questions and then the nurse left me with like a, a robe to change into or whatever. So my mom and I are in this waiting room and I'm changing and I have my belly button pierced. And I go to uh, take out my belly button because that was obviously a, a thing the nurse said. She's like, do you have any metal in your body? I said, yeah, I have a, a belly button ring. And she said, well, you need to remove that. I mean, that thing's going to get like yanked out of you. Um, so I had to get this, this navel ring out. And so um, I go to take it out and I cannot take it out for the life of me. I mean, I am pulling on it, pulling at it. My palms are getting sweaty. So it's like making it 
you know, more difficult to, to grasp and to yank out. And uh, my mom comes over and she's trying to help me for like 15 or 20 minutes. We are working on this ring, this navel ring, and it will not budge. And so the nurse finally comes in and says, you know what, you're holding up, um, our, our time, our, the rest of our schedule for the day, we're going to have to have you go home, get this belly button ring out and then reschedule and we'll get you in. So I went home. I was pretty, um, pretty discouraged because I wanted to know what was going on with my back. Well, in the week to follow, I never got my belly button ring out, but I did find out that I was pregnant and, uh, and so after about a month of realizing I was pregnant, I was sitting in my bedroom one day and um, I hadn't even thought about my belly button ring again, hadn't worked on it at all, trying to get it out. And I sat down on my bed and I started thinking, oh man, I'm going to get really big with this baby. I better take out this belly button ring because it's going to, sh- my stomach's going to stretch so much. I don't want it to like yank on my skin. I don't know. I don't, what I was thinking, however, a 19 year old and eight, actually 18 year old thinks And um, so I was like, Lord, I need to get this belly button ring out. Would you please help me? And I put my hands on it and it just with a gentle nudge, pop, it just popped right open and very smoothly it came right out. Now I want you to think about something for a minute. Well, let me finish the story first. I looked at that belly button ring and I began to weep. I just began to cry. I had an overwhelming um, revelation that the Lord had held that belly button ring together when I was in the hospital for that MRI. I believe with all my heart, an angel was clasping that ring together and there was no way I was going to beat him, um, in protection for a, a baby that I didn't know was even in my womb. That is amazing. God intervened on behalf of my oldest son because he said, son, you, you have purpose. Um, you know, I, I am going to save you. Um, I want you to live. I want you to be here in this world. And, and Leslie, I want you to be his mom. And so again, that day, just that revelation and that I I began to cry and, um, and just thank the Lord. God, thank you for intervening. Thank you for sending your angels, um, to obey your word. Thank you for sending your angels to protect my baby. Even when I didn't know it, that is just an example of how I've had an interaction with an angel, with the angelic realm. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you today. Again, it wasn't a message. I didn't get a message from an angel, but this is why there is an angelic realm. Sometimes it is to deliver a, a word from the Lord, but oftentimes it's to do the Lord's bidding. It is to protect us and um, and to to minister to us. So that is how we're going to rip it up, uh, wrap it up. I'm going to pray for you. And then I'll, um, for those of you that are doing this as a, um, as a small group, or just want some, uh, quest- food for thought questions to, um, meditate on, I'll give you those. So Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, that in your perfect plan for humanity in your perfect plan for the way you created the heavens and you created the earth, God, as you put angels in place. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for them. I thank you for how you created them and what you created them for. God, it really is for our benefit. Um, And so I just give you thanks and praise. I thank you in front of the camera, in front of this group of people. God, I thank you for the protection and the life of my oldest son, Austin. God, I thank you for the plan you have for him, the destiny you have for him. God bless him right now as we speak. And, um, and God, yeah, we just glorify your holy name. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your creativity. And thank you that you speak to us. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Well, those of you that are um, wanting a couple questions to think on, uh, number one, I need to find the right questions real quickly. How's that for professional? Okay, number one, of course, what stood out to you today? I always like to ask that question. It's a good one. And then um, the second one, share a time that you've encountered an angel's um, presence, an angelic presence, right? So maybe uh, maybe you've heard, um, heard them or, uh, gosh, I've heard people hear, uh, say they hear angels singing in worship. 
that's kind of crazy but um or maybe it was a something similar to me but just you you ex, um, experienced or encountered the angelic realm it's just kind of fun to talk about and think about those things so share that and then number three is um according to what we've read between zachariah between mary how share a time or or i'm sorry not a time but tell how you think you would respond if an angel approached you right these people it says most of these people are terrified they're like whoa who who is this or what what is this or whatever um but i don't know just just think about that how would i respond if an if i had an angel visitation um how would i respond and how do you want to respond so that's all just some food for thought anyway love you guys have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.